Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't intend to come here this year. My country is at war, fighting for its life. But after I heard the lies and slanders leveled at my country by many of the speakers at this podium, I decided to come here and set the record straight. I decided to come here to speak for my people, to speak for my country, to speak for the truth. And here's the truth. Israel seeks peace. Israel yearns for peace. Israel has made peace and will make peace again. Yet we face savage enemies who seek our annihilation, and we must defend ourselves against these savage murderers. Our enemies seek not only to destroy us, they seek to destroy our common civilization and return all of us to a dark age of tyranny and terror. When I spoke here last year, I said we face the same timeless choice that Moses put before the people of Israel thousands of years ago. As we were about to enter the Promised Land, Moses told us that our actions will determine whether we bequeath to future generations a blessing or a curse. And that is the choice we face today. The curse of Iran's unremitting aggression or the blessing of a historic reconciliation between Arab and Jew. In the days that followed that speech, the blessing I spoke of came into sharper focus. A normalization deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel seemed closer than ever. But then came the curse of October 7th. Thousands of Iranian-backed Hamas terrorists from Gaza burst into Israel in pickup trucks, on motorcycles, and they committed unimaginable atrocities. They savagely murdered 1,200 people. They raped and mutilated women. They beheaded men. They burned babies alive. They burnt entire families alive, babies, children, parents, grandparents, in scenes reminiscent of the Nazi Holocaust. Hamas kidnapped 251 people from dozens of different countries, dragging them into the dungeons of Gaza. Israel has brought home 154 of these hostages, including 117 who returned alive. I want to assure you, we will not rest until the remaining hostages are brought home too. And some of their family members are here with us today. I ask you to stand up. With us, with us is Eli Stevi, whose son Idan was abducted from the Nova Music Festival. That was his crime, a music festival. And these murderous monsters took him. Kobe Smyrno, whose son Jonathan was murdered, and his corpse, his corpse was taken into the dungeons, into the terror tunnels of Gaza, a corpse held hostage. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to suggest any topics to be covered by Sons of Diversity. And remember to subscribe if you like what you see.